Symmetry Complete View 5.1 is a very special release for both Salient and AMAG because it is absolutely packed with features. It is the biggest release since we released our uh, Complete View 2020 version 5 product, which had a whole new interface and improved architecture and uh, management capabilities. So I want to take you through some of the features. They're very exciting. Then we're going to go into a demonstration of, uh, of a couple of the features uh, for you to see live here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is throughout the course of the presentation, please type your questions into the QA box component of, uh, of WebEx, okay? So any questions you have, type in the QA box. At the end of the presentation, we're gonna have a dedicated uh, QA section. And also, you have the chance to win a $200 gift card today. So how that works is during the course of the presentation, we'll be sharing a bunch of information about uh, Symmetry Complete View 5.1. I'll ask a question right as we begin the QA section, and whoever gets the answer correct first uh, wins the $200 gift card. I'll have that mailed out to you this week. Um, so the, the way to answer the question is again through the QA box. Type the, type the answer in the QA box. First correct answer wins, and uh, so we'll look forward to that as well. Okay, so without further ado, let's take a look at some of the new features in Symmetry Complete View 5.1. Um, I've divided this up into two sections. We have kind of the big features and some of the other features. So first for the big features, we've added a failover capability. So this allows you to failover recording servers in Symmetry Complete View 5.1. The way it works is you can assign a dedicated failover server to one or many primary recording servers. If any of them has an issue, it will be automatically detected by the management server component of Symmetry Complete View 5.1, and that will initiate a failover sequence, which will um, reassign any clients viewing cameras to the failover server and reassign the cameras themselves to record for the failover server. I'm going to take you through the intricacies of how that works here in a second, and then walk you through the very, very simple setup of, uh, process and capabilities that, uh, that are there during the demo section of the presentation. We have also added a video wall capability. This is really cool. What it allows you to do is control what gets displayed on a remote computer and a remote monitor. So from a single desktop client instance in Symmetry Complete View, you can see a representation of a video wall, which might commonly be part of a, a global security operations center. You can then drag and drop different things that you may want to view onto the representation of the video wall and that element will pop up on the corresponding screen on that remote computer. Um, this is a component of Symmetry Complete View Enterprise, as is the failover capability I just mentioned. I'm going to actually demonstrate that through a video demo. It's, it's very difficult to do, of course, on a, on a webinar to show multiple screens simultaneously, but we're going to walk you through how that, how that looks. We've added OnVIF Profile S capability, and we've done a, a deep integration of OnVIF Profile S. So you'll be able to do all kinds of things with OnVIF Profile S cameras, including uh, automatic discovery. You'll be able to perform uh, configuration of the video stream. You'll be able to, of course, pull live video, audio, control PTZ uh, capabilities of those cameras. And you'll also be able to interface with events. So if you have a Profile S camera, that has any type of on-camera motion detection or analytics, we'll be able to pick those up and create corresponding actions in Symmetry Complete View. We have added H.265 support uh, specifically for Axis, Hike Vision, Ericont, IDIS, TrueVision, Panasonic, and Hanwha, and we're adding more and more cameras uh, to this list as, as we progress. We also have a generic H.265 driver, so if you have a camera that doesn't have a corresponding driver in Symmetry Complete View, 99% of the time it'll work just fine and we can, uh, with our partners at AMAG, validate any cameras that you may uh, need a driver for. And then we've added the capability of dynamic resolution scaling to 360 fisheye cameras. So if for anyone who's not familiar with dynamic resolution scaling, it's one of the most powerful features of Symmetry Complete View. What it does is it results in dramatically reduced bandwidth consumption when you're viewing live video or performing an investigation of recorded video. With 360 fisheye cameras, because the, uh, the camera is de-warped at the client, we had not been able previously to reduce the resolution of the image, which is how 
dynamic resolution scaling works. It reduces the video resolution when you're transmitting uh, the video over the network to the display size on the client computer. It doesn't affect the recorded video. The recorded video is always at full resolution so you can export uh, that video and have the full detail for your evidence. Um, however, this, uh, this capability now allows 360 cameras to uh, be transmitted over the network remotely um, very effectively with the full capability of dynamic resolution scaling. And it also allows to perform remote uh, investigations on those cameras, even though they're 360 cameras, you still have the full de-warping capability as a result of this feature. So we're very excited about that enhancement, now bringing dynamic resolution scaling to basically any camera and any technology that you bring into Symmetry Complete View. So now I wanna take a minute to walk you through how the failover capability works. This is an N plus one failover capability. Again, you can uh, assign a server to be a failover server to a single or multiple primary recording servers in Symmetry Complete View. And uh, let me just take, take you through this graphic on the slide here before we start walking through the process. So you'll see at the top of the graphic, there's a box labeled management server. The management server is a required component of a Symmetry Complete View deployment. If you have a very small deployment, you're probably not worried about failover anyways, but it can all exist on a single computer, the management server and the recording server. So, uh, however, in a larger deployment where failover um, uh, may be a requirement, management server can also exist on a separate computer. That's how I'm representing it on the slide here. The management server is the repository for the system's configuration and authentication. And in this case, it is the, um, it is the machine that is checking whether or not the primary recording servers are running properly. Then in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see there's a primary recording server. You'll see the label at kind of the bottom of that square, and it shows you within the square different components of the primary recording server. Over in the bottom right, you'll see a standby recording server. That's our failover server. And you'll see as the graphic depicts right now, that standby recording server, the, the failover system is not running because you see the little uh, red circle with the line through it. And then in the center of those two servers, there is shared storage. This could be a NAS. More commonly, it's going to be the storage that's available on the standby recording server, but it needs to be accessible to both the standby recording server and the primary recording server. That's the key. Okay, so let me walk you through the process. So we start off with everything is running fine. The management server is operating it is communicating with the primary recording server. You can see those little arrows there in between the management server and the primary and standby recording servers. That represents communication. That's what we call a heartbeat message. Think of it as the management server is pinging the primary recording server. As long as the primary recording server responds to that ping, we know it's up and running. The moment it doesn't respond to the ping anymore, we know that the primary recording server is down and the failover process needs to begin, okay? So the heartbeat message, right, that's the technical term for it, monitors the primary recording server. If that primary recording server goes down, you'll see the heartbeat message now has an X to it. That means uh, the primary recording server did not respond to that heartbeat communication. The management server now knows, okay, it's time to initiate the failover process. So what happens then is the standby recording server is brought online by the management server. Effectively, what that does, the management server sends a message, hey, it's time to wake up and start taking over the configuration. Then it transmits the configuration of the primary recording server to that standby recording server. So now the standby recording server knows, okay, I have this list of cameras and I need to begin recording video from those cameras. In addition to that, uh, desktop client applications need to be moved from uh, trying to pull video from the primary recording server, which is now down, over to the standby recording server so that the video is uninterrupted for live viewing purposes. Okay? Now, the primary recording server at some point in the future gets restored. And once it's restored, those heartbeat messages start getting responded to. So now the management server knows, okay, um, the primary recording server is back up. I'm going to send a message to the standby recording server and say, it's time to take down your connections to those clients and cameras. So that's exactly what it does. During the time the uh, standby recording server was in that failover process, all the video from the cameras got recorded 
to the shared storage that you see in the middle of that graphic there, okay? But because the primary recording server has access to that shared storage, it is still able to play back the recordings for a client that requests recorded video, okay? It's just like you're recording to a system that maybe has two recording volumes. Complete View, uh, Symmetry Complete View knows exactly where the video is, even though it's not physically on that primary recording server. So the beauty of this design is that the video doesn't have to be physically transferred uh, from the failover server to the primary recording server, but it's still accessible uh, the entire time it needs to be accessed by a client who wants to uh, pull recorded video that was recorded during the failure event. Okay, so you get all the benefits without any drawbacks of that transfer taking place, consuming resources on the recording server and resources on the network. It's, it's a very, uh, very good design that they came up with. So that's how it works in a nutshell. Again, if you have any questions, uh, please type your questions or feedback into the QA box and we'll address them during the QA section of the presentation. Now we're gonna go back to some of the secondary features of version 5.1. Again, we've added a ton of new features. Here's a few more. We uh, added CD and DVD export capability to the uh, desktop client in Symmetry Complete View. So what that allows you to do now, you don't have to just export files perhaps to a thumb drive. You can export video directly to a CD DVD drive um, without using third party CD DVD burning software. This is a particularly popular method of export because once a CD or DVD is written, it becomes read only and that helps in the, the chain of custody process. Uh, we've added smart search capabilities. So now you can search based on motion uh, that exists in a particular defined zone of recorded video. So you pull up a camera's uh, recordings, you draw a box in the scene, and the system will look for motion just in that defined area. So if you know where something happened, but not when it happened, smart search is a great tool to use in Symmetry Complete View. We have added back in push update support. So this is one of the traditional defining characteristics of Symmetry Complete View. It has the ability to allow administrators of the system to push out software updates to not just all of the recording servers simultaneously, but also the client application. So literally with one action, you can push a software update out to your entire Symmetry Complete View system, um, which makes it very, very simple to manage. In fact, if you think of, of one of the most time-consuming ongoing management processes when you've deployed a video management software application, it's really the updating process, especially if you have a large deployment with many recording servers and or many uh, clients deployed across the network, okay? Uh, a small update that may come, you know, three or four times a year can turn into a very large IT project. But with this capability, it can literally be done in minutes. We have added a camera diagnostics feature. This is a very important troubleshooting capability. So if uh, users of Symmetry Complete View 5.1 encounter any um, camera connection challenges or other types of camera challenges, now our support teams can get into camera diagnostics and troubleshoot the situation much more quickly than we otherwise could have. So this is a great kind of um, feature that allows for uh, you know, better ongoing operation of the system. You have the ability now to reorder cameras. So uh, when you've added a recording server into your system and you've added cameras to the recording server, the order in which the cameras appear throughout the Symmetry Complete View software is the order in which you added them uh, originally to the system when you were configuring and installing it. Well, now you have the ability to change that order. So if you added camera number five, but it really should be camera number three, you can just move it up in the system with this capability. There's an auto login capability. This allows uh, Symmetry Complete View to remember your login. And um, when you open up the desktop client, it brings you back uh, according to the previous login credentials without having to hit the login button. So, so for those types of deployments where uh, they really wanna make it uh, more like an appliance login situation where they don't want users dealing with login credentials, this is a great capability to allow for that ease of use and ease of access. And it is now available, so you can download Symmetry Complete View 5.1. Systems are shipping with Symmetry Complete View 5.1. So all these capabilities are available uh, uh, at this moment. Okay, 
Now we're going to go into a demonstration, so I'm going to break out of the presentation here. You'll see Symmetry Complete U5.1 running live. I also have a video demonstration of the video wall capability. And I just want to remind everybody, if you have a question, type it into the QA box and we'll address those questions uh, at the end of the presentation. Okay, so what you should see on the screen now is Symmetry Complete U5.1. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is the video wall capability, and then I'll take you through some of the failover settings, uh, and then we'll go to the QA section of the presentation. So let me bring up a video of the video wall capability. Okay, so what we had to do here is, uh, what, what you see in the video is there's four monitors represented on this video that are all being recorded simultaneously. The top screen is the screen that I'm using to control the video wall, the video wall being the bottom three screens. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what's called the video wall agent. Now, as I had described previously, the video wall allows a, uh, a desktop client to control what gets displayed on uh, another screen that is on a different computer. And you can control multiple screens across multiple computers simultaneously. The, uh, the secret ingredient to making this all work is there's an agent, what we call the video wall agent. It's a little application that runs down in the system tray. You can actually see the configuration screen of the agent on the bottom center monitor right now. And I'm gonna walk you through what happens with that agent. The way it works is you'll see it's broken down into a couple of sections. That top section where the controls are lit up, that is the section that allows you to connect it to a management server. What the agent does is it tells the management server of a computer where the screens are accessible and tells what screens can be controlled by the video wall. So you'll see on this particular demo, there's four screens that were listed in that kind of middle section there. I just unchecked one of the four screens that I do not want to share with the management server. So we'll be sharing just the three screens that you see at the bottom there. And uh, then we register that with the management server. Now, I can create a video wall in the desktop client that uh, has those three screens as well as other screens from other computers that we've shared with the management server. Okay, so that's basically activated this system and allowed its corresponding screens to be part of a video wall. So I'll continue here. It also has the capability to put up a nice splash screen, so it kind of erases the, uh, the desktop nuances for visual appeal. So now you'll see that I'm controlling the uh, desktop client on the top screen. I've gone into the configuration area. Now in the configuration area, you'll see it's split into two sides. On the left side, that dark gray, uh, uh, third option down, that's typically where you configure view layouts and maps. Well, in Symmetry Complete View 5.1, there's a new node underneath there called Walls. So what I did was I expanded the walls node, right click, and I'm adding a new wall. Okay, and it brings up the configuration for the new wall. The first thing I do is give it a name, and the name here is just laptop. And then it allows me to choose the number of rows and columns, which will ultimately represent the video wall, okay? So of course, in this situation, you'll see the video wall is composed of three screens, all in one row. So I'm gonna ultimately choose one row, by three columns, and that will create the representation of the video wall. However, you can do up to five rows and up to 12 columns for a total of 60 screens controlled by a single video wall. So there's the columns option. You can see the list is long. It actually goes up to 12, again, for a total of 60 screens on a video wall. So now that I've created the one by three video wall, uh, you'll see in the center part of the screen, where the mouse is currently, there's, um, there's an agent represented there, and underneath the agent, there's the three individual screens, and that corresponds to the video uh, wall agent that I had registered with the management server. Once you tell the management server that a video wall agent exists and how many screens, it ultimately causes that to pop up in this area that we're looking at right now. I'm gonna go ahead and play the video again, one of the things I can do is check which screen uh, corresponds to physical screen in reality. You can see I'm doing that. If you look at the screen there, the bottom uh, rightmost one has number four on it. So that tells me the one that I just um, checked corresponds to that physical screen in reality. 
and then to configure which screen goes to which spot in the video wall represented uh, in configuration here, I simply drag the screen and drop it into the corresponding spot that I want that screen to be controlled by. Okay, so we'll continue with the video. So now I've finished the configuration, I hit the Save button, and I can go back to the live view, and you'll see I'm going to call up that video wall. So now if you're looking at that top screen, you'll see there's a new section uh, displayed at the bottom of that screen, which shows the three individual screens that are controlled, that are controlling my video wall. All I have to do to control the video wall is simply drag and drop something into the corresponding screen, and it shows up in reality on that screen. So you can see what I'm doing now is I'm dragging and dropping individual cameras. Those individual cameras then pop up full screen on the corresponding video wall, but I can control entire view layouts as well. So I just drag and drop the view layout and replace the individual camera with that entire view layout. You can also do the same thing with a map, okay? So now you can see you have all these different types of media available to you, all controlled on the video wall simultaneously. So again, a simple drag and drop operation. What I can do is I can also clear all of the screens. I'm about to do that. And then I can start fresh. You don't have to clear a screen. You can just drag and drop something new over it. You can also clear individual screens. So every mechanism of control is available to you in different areas of the desktop client. Again, kind of following the same theme of ease of use. If you want to get somewhere in the video client, you can do it, and you can do it the way you prefer to do it, whether you want to clear all the screens on the video wall object or on the individual monitors. Very simple to do. Now, there's another application for video walls, not just controlling, you know, a big bank of screens in your security operations center. You can also use it as a video sharing tool. And this is a really powerful concept. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to configure a video wall that's composed of a single screen, uh, and it represents a screen that may be on the security director's computer, right? So I am a guard in the monitoring center. Maybe I want to share a video with the security director, call him on the phone and say, hey, take a look at this guy. Um, you know, tell me what you think. How do you want to respond to this? So right now I'm just giving the video wall a name called security director screen, and I'm going to make a one by one matrix. And again, the matrix can go up to five by 12 for a total of 60 screens. So I'll continue playing the video. Now I'm going to take, now this would require, of course, installing the agent on the security director's computer and registering uh, one of their screens with the management server so it shows up as a configurable screen in the video wall configuration area. Okay. But I've actually associated it to an existing screen on the existing video wall, but we'll use that to represent the concept here. So you can see as we start out here, we still have the three screens from the original video wall that we created. I'm going to switch over to the security director video wall, and you'll now see that the uh, video wall represented in the desktop client has changed to only show the one screen, okay? Now we'll simply drag and drop a camera, and it pops up on that corresponding screen. This might be the point where I call that security director and say, hey, take a look at this guy in the orange shirt. He seems suspicious to me. What do you think we should do about it? So, so consider that application. It's not just for uh, organizations that have a big GSOC, it's, it's for a lot of organizations and it's for a lot of uses. And there's probably other creative uses that we haven't encountered or conceived of yet. Um, you'll see that uh, if you look back up at the top screen there, uh, the desktop client, I've switched back to the original video wall. So you'll see the display has changed to the three screens uh, by one row. And now I'm controlling all the screens simultaneously. So you can easily flip back and forth between um, different video walls in your desktop client and control different uh, computers or use it for different applications. So very, very cool feature, probably one of the most visually appealing capabilities in version 5.1, but we think users will get a lot of use out of this capability. So again, this is a feature that uh, is available in complete, uh, Symmetry Complete View Enterprise Edition, right? So if you like this feature, you want the Enterprise Edition or you want to upgrade to the Enterprise Edition, uh, but again, we think it will add a lot of value. So now, very quickly, I want to take you through some of the configuration options for failover, and I just want to remind everybody, again, if anybody has a question, please type it into the QA box in the, the WebEx screen. So I'm going to go into configuration, 
And uh, in configuration, I will open up the recording servers view, and I'm going to click on this performance lab server. And you'll see on this screen, I get a lot of pertinent stats and statistics about the server, including how to log into it, uh, what the license count is, um, uh, who is connected to the server, the installed RAM and processor in the system, all the different cameras are. I can click on a camera, I can get the live view, but what we want to pay attention to is in the lower left, and you'll see there's a section here if you follow the mouse called failover. It is extremely simple to configure, okay? So what you do is from the primary recording server that you want to be associated to a failover system, you simply add a standby server, a failover server. I hit the add button here and you'll see this little row comes up and I type in the IP address and the volume path, okay? So the volume path is the shared storage. If you remember back to the slide, uh, the failover solution requires that the, the primary recording server and the failover server have simultaneous access to some type of shared storage. It could be a SAN, it could be a NAS device, most commonly, it's going to be the storage that's already available in the failover server, and you simply share it as a drive and configure Active Directory to allow the um, primary server to be able to authenticate and record to that shared volume. Uh, but it's a very, very simple setup process. It's all described in the documentation for Symmetry Complete View 5.1. So I'm just going to type in black, black failover server slash uh, storage volume, okay? And that's it. Uh, I've just configured failover. Uh, very, very simple to do. Now that I have a failover server configured here, I can choose to manually failover if I want to test this and manually restore to bring the configuration back. So it's also very, very simple to test. Uh, here's a really cool thing. You'll see down at the bottom of the screen, there's these two buttons indicating that there's two pages to the screen. So I'm going to go over to the second page. And what you can do on this page is, let's say your system has failed over, and now all the cameras are running on your failover server. But the primary recording server is not recoverable. You had to actually uh, remove the hardware, install a new server, or reconfigure it for one reason or another. Um, so it can't fail back over automatically because the uh, previous primary recording server never comes back up again. Well, you can actually restore uh, the failover server to a new primary recording server. And this is where you do that. You simply put in the new uh, address, username and password, and all the um, configuration that exists on the failover server will get pushed to the brand new server that you want to become your primary recording server if you couldn't recover the original primary recording server. So there's different recovery options also available in the failover feature. We think it's a really, really great feature. If you do need failover, uh, this is a great way to get it. And that's part of Symmetry Complete View 5.1 Enterprise. Okay, so now we're going to go back into the presentation. And we are at the point where we're going to start the Q&A section. So if anybody has any questions, please type them into the Q&A box. But before we do that, I'm going to ask you the quiz question. And the question is, uh, hey, hey, Brian, before you ask that question, yes. how, how do they answer this? How, how are you going to grade the uh, answer? Okay, yes, uh, great question. So if you know the answer, type it into the QA box. The first person to get the correct answer will get the $200 gift card, okay? Fantastic. Um, so Fantastic. I, let's, let's, give everybody, uh, let's give everybody a minute to see if they can find the QA box. Uh, it should be off to the right side. Um, if anybody has any questions, uh, <laughs> I guess write a question in the QA box asking where the QA box is. <laughs> Let's just give them a few seconds here real quick. Hey, while, while we're doing that, Brian, maybe we can answer the one or two questions that were typed in, uh, and then we can ask that question. Does that sound good? Okay, that sounds good. Let me uh, identify the first question here. Uh, if you want me to, I can just read them off to you. Jim answered one of them, and then uh, so we can answer that with Jim and Jim's response, and then you can add any color to that if you'd like to. Okay, perfect. So the first question we have here is, I need one failover for primary recording server. 
or just one as a failure? Okay, so that's a great question. So basically, um, what we're asking here is, is we need one failover uh, server per primary recording server, or can a single failover server support multiple primary recording servers? And the answer is the latter. So you can have, uh, you know, one, two, three, or more recording servers backed up by a single failover server. The trade-off is, in the event that you have a failover uh, situation, and now that failover server is backing up one of the many primary recording servers, should a, another primary recording server go down, there won't be a failover server available to fail it over, right? So you have to consider how many simultaneous failure events are you gonna have, and then use that to determine what your ratio of uh, primary recording servers to failover servers is going to be. So that is the, that is the trade-off there. Um, the next question here, where is the shared storage located? Is it on the standby server itself or is it a NAS on the network? So that's a great question. And the answer is it can be either uh, one of those scenarios. Um, what we anticipate is that most consumers will use the storage that is available on the failover server, right? So when you purchase a server that's going to be a failover server, it's going to have some storage on it. Just add enough storage to keep the recordings during the fail or, uh, failure events um, uh, on that, that failover server. So if you don't anticipate having many fail, fail, um, failure events, uh, or if you anticipate recovering from those fail, failure events, quite quickly, and therefore there won't be a lot of recording stored on that failover server. You don't need a lot of storage that, uh, on there, but you need some to record the video that occurs during the failure event. And yes, that storage can be located on the failover server itself. You just have to basically uh, share a folder and associate that shared folder uh, to the primary recording server in the configuration. Um, Jason, do we want to take a crack at the, uh, the question? Uh, yep, well, let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so here's the question, everybody. I've mentioned this a couple times during the presentation, and the question is, what, uh, how many screens can a single video wall support? So how many screens can you get in a single video wall? You'll remember that there was a matrix. Oh, I already see the correct answer. If you have not typed the correct answer in yet, you lose. So the winner <laughs> is <laughs> Jason Fazio. So congratulations, Jason. You are the winner of the $200 gift card. If you wouldn't mind, just please type your address into the QA box uh, that you want us to ship the, the gift card to, and uh, I will get that shipped out to you. So congratulations. Thanks, everybody, who participated in the, uh, the question section. Hey, now, let me um, go back Brian, to Chris here. Just to, just before we close it, there were two questions that got sandwiched uh, in between the um, shared storage and the failover. Uh, one, um, can I virtualize complete view? And then two, what does full integration with symmetry include exclude? So why don't you okay, so let's take this one at a time. Can okay. I virtualize symmetry complete view? That's a great question. The answer is yes. Symmetry Complete View is, comp is compatible with any number of virtualization products. It's been used widely with, you know, VMware. Um, so yes, there's no problem virtualizing it. Uh, and what was the second question, Chris? Uh, from Ryan Masters, what does full, quote unquote, full integration with Symmetry include, exclude? I know you guys added some, some exciting features recently. Um, generically speaking, the integration component between uh, Symmetry Access Control and Symmetry Complete View allows uh, an association of cameras to access control readers. So you can say this reader is associated with this camera. When an event occurs on the reader, it can trigger a corresponding event in Symmetry Complete View. And that can cause the corresponding camera to record, um, cause a PTZ camera to move, an email to be sent. Um, a live video to pop up on the screen, any number of things can be, can uh, trigger that. So at the most basic level, that's the integration, but it goes much, much deeper um, with features that make it very easy to configure uh, and, uh, and very, very functional as well. Um, if we, uh, if Jim is not on, what I suggest we do is perhaps follow up by email 
after the presentation so we get a full uh, account of the capabilities uh, in the integration. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that sounds fantastic. So what we'll do is we'll take all the questions that were asked today um, and then we'll, we'll send them out to everybody. Uh, hopefully by the end of the day today, we'll get this out to everybody. Okay. And what, one last question for you, Brian. Uh, can an upgrade to 5.1 be done with the license of 5.0? Great question. Can you upgrade from 5.0 to 5.1? When you go from like 5.0 to 5.01 or 5.02, that doesn't require any special type of licensing. When you go from uh, one, what we would call an incremental release to the next, which would be 5.0 to 5.1, to then 5.2 to then 5.3, um, that requires what we call a feature key. Um, to get the feature key, uh, typically uh, consumers would have what we call a YUP or yearly update plan. That is the software support agreement that is available as part of Symmetry Complete View. So if you're, if you're on the UP plan, you have free access to the upgrade to go from 5.0 to 5.1. If you didn't purchase the UP plan, but you bought the Symmetry Complete View software along with the Symmetry Power Protect hardware, well, you automatically get the UPs for free for the length of the warranty of the hardware, right? So that's usually three years, sometimes it's five years. Um, so as long as you have the UP, you're good to go. If you don't have the UP, Call your AMAG representative and they can uh, 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 tell you how to get upgraded to version 5.1. Great question.